Naturally occurring black pigments in vegetables, spices, and seeds have been found to have powerful anti-inflammatory effects. Hi, this is Dr. Ronald Hoffman, and I'm excited about what I think may be the next big thing in anti-inflammatory supplements, a brand new all-natural daily preventative against a host of possible inflammatory issues. Black for Health Liquid Extract from Future Farm Botanicals. Black for Health combines four plant-based foods, black garlic, black radish root, black cumin seed, and black peppercorn containing high levels of body-ready healing botanicals. Black for Health supports your liver, skin, cholesterol, blood pressure, and weight management, circulation, and immunity. It's a tasty supplement with liposome complex for optimal absorption. For more information or to order, call 888-841-7216, 888-841-7216, or go to myfuturefarm.com slash Hoffman. That's my future. Farm, P-H-A-R-M, myfuturefarm.com slash Hoffman, myfuturefarm.com slash Hoffman. Welcome back to today's Intelligent Medicine Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Ronald Hoffman, uh, what I hope to be a very timely broadcast because it's uh, we're in the full flush of allergy season. Lots of people uh, sneezing, wheezing, rubbing their eyes, coughing, and... Um, uh, these days, uh, that sometimes arouses uh, concern. <laughs> you know, people say, <laughs> "Have you had your, have you had your vaccine yet?" Uh, you know, maybe you should get a nasal swab. Uh, you go, no, no, it's just my usual allergies. Uh, don't mind me, uh, as you uh, discreetly wipe your nose. But uh, you know, allergies are uh, at any time uh, a serious problem, and we're going to talk about some natural ways of dealing with allergies. So, um, all right, we talked a little bit about diet. Uh, what can we say about, you know, you, you have, um, you're, you're a professional member of the American Herbalist Guild. Uh, and so your, uh, your approach is based on uh, using, utilizing uh, nutraceuticals, uh, herbal remedies, and vitamins and supplements. Uh, what, what helps for allergies? And tremendously. And there are studies showing that it is helpful. And also the risk of side effects and adverse effects are actually low. And at this point in my career, which I think everyone knows has been going on for a long time, I've been doing natural medicine for since 1964. So we're talking about, you know, pushing past 50 years. So this is really tried oh and true. Oh my you were but a prodigy. Now, you were doing this when yeah. you were in, doing this in grade school? <laughs> so cute. And, you know, it's interesting because now the evidence is really accumulating to where I really think this is not alternative or special natural way. This should be standard of practice because it is safer, it is more effective, it is well studied and fully evidence based and more cost effective in many ways, especially, you know, if you're actually paying, let's say, for medication. So when we're looking at some of these that are studied, for instance, vitamin C, vitamin D, bioflavonoids, both in food and especially liquid supplements, and then specific herbs like nettle leaf um, and bromelain, quercetin, those are nutraceuticals, turmeric can be helpful, black pepper, and we'll talk about a lot of these like nettles and eyebright mm -hmm. and mullein and fenugreek. Now, when you're really going to individualize a therapeutic, then it might be different, let's say, for you or me. But nonetheless, there's such a vast array of um, actives that have been studied. And we even know the mechanism, something like licorice root, it has anti-inflammatory action similar to glutocorticoids, which are produced by healthy adrenals, and those are involved metabolically with resolving allergic reactions. So there is so much you can do with natural remedies with this particular issue. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, one of my favorites, which is uh, quercetin. Uh, quercetin is, is thought to be a, a natural antihistamine and an allergy blocker and an anti-inflammatory. Uh, how do you appropriately use it? Because, uh, you know, opinions vary on, you know, whether you can take a pill or two or whether you should go, you know, mega dosing with quercetin to quench allergies. That's true. And first of all, it's certainly there in many foods, especially yellow plant bioflavonoids like onions and 
uh, broccoli and squash, yellow squash. And it's one of the most bioactive flavo uh, flavonoids that forms the backbone of many of the other colored agents in fruits and vegetables. But specifically, it acts as a mast cell stabilizer and a leukotriene and prostaglandin inhibitor. And, and by the way, just, a to, just, to, just to mention yeah. that there, there is a whole category of drugs that are uh, leukotriene uh, inhibitors. Uh, so when people take uh, Montelukast, which is called, you know, the brand name is Singulair, that's a popular non antihistamine medication for allergies. Uh, it's used uh, for asthmatics. It's now used for people who have uh, other types of allergic problems, even allergic uh, skin conditions. Uh, so that that's it's very interesting. It's the activity, of course, in parallels that of many drugs. That is interesting, especially like you brought up, that quercetin in very high amounts, there is some literature pointing to the fact that it might become a pro-oxidant rather than an antioxidant. Hmm. So actually, that was done at Stony Brook University, that right, study. You right know. in your, 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 your hood, right? right. Yes, and in Stone fact, I was on, fa I, on the faculty of Stony Brook at the time that research was going on. So you're right, you know, using more is not necessarily better, but particularly in combination formulas and especially eating these kinds of things like onions, you know, that can be helpful. You don't have to count them. The milligram amounts of quercetin. You know, one of my, one of my favorites, uh, Ellen, it, and you're, you're probably very familiar with the product, is, is something called dehist, which can, is three things that you mentioned. It's the nettles, it's the bromelain, and the quercetin together, I, I think, in one product. It's made by Orthomolecular. And, you know, I'm not giving this out just because they're a sponsor or something. It's just a, a product that, that I like. Uh, Tell people that? that name again because that's an excellent combination. Good. Yeah. Uh, it's called D-Hist. And they even have a D-Hist Junior, so we give it to kids. It's very safe. And, uh, you know, I'd rather give a, uh, you know, a seven-year-old D-Hist than, you know, potent antihistamine. I'm not sure what it's going to do to their their brain. So shouldn't that be, at this point, conventional standard of practice? That's a rhetorical question, and of course you know, know the answer. <laughs> but I'm really on the bandwagon about yeah. this now. Well, you've it's been fighting been this battle as, a, as an RN. You've been as a holistic nurse. You've been fighting this battle for decades now, and you know the resistance to things that don't come from the pharmaceutical side of right. But it, it's it's like the the jig, the jig is up. Yeah, the jig is up. Yeah. Every physician should have that in their medicine chests of recommendations because it works better, it's safer, you know, there's no reason why not. It doesn't have all kinds of additives and preservatives and colors and dyes. It's just an excellent choice and really works quite well. And maybe it needs to be combined with some limitation of wheat and dairy. Okay. Uh, and you're going to get some very nice results. Right. Uh, uh, vitamin C. As well, vitamin C has natural antihistamine properties. Well, we love a full, a full sort of anti-allergy cocktail. My favorite is taking a powdered, buffered vitamin C and putting about 2,000 milligrams in water, adding about 100 milligrams of vitamin B6, which mm. also has an anti-allergic component, okay. along with magnesium. And, you know... Even magnesium glycinate now is available as a powdered magnesium, mm -hmm. about maybe 500 milligrams of, of calcium. And if, as long as we're giving out brands, I will tell you my favorite bioflavonoid, yeah. which is called Nature's Answer Liquid Bioflavonoid. Nature's Answer Liquid Bioflavonoids. Mm -hmm. I have been working with Nature's Answer since 1972. Two. Oh, okay. And that's how long this product has been on the market. It's got a delicious, tangy flavor. Children like it. My own children were given all this stuff. My own children are 46 and 42 now, and they never had any of antibiotics or any kind of pharmaceutical. Always natural medicine. So even then, we were using Nature's Answers liquid bioflavonoids, and that's a perfect anti-allergy cocktail. That works very quickly. And adding in what you brought up also, bromelain. Indeed. Uh, so uh, 
Talk to us a little bit about this um, new way of looking at things through the lens of histamine intolerance. Uh, this is applicable sometimes to people who, who have difficult to trace allergies. It's almost like they're an allergy factory. They, they, you know, they're allergic know. to a myriad of things, and it's impossible to eliminate all of them. Uh, they just are – There's it's something in their nature is allergic. But now uh, the notion of histamine intolerance has given us a little bit of an insight into why that might be happening. So that is, you know, those people do have a lot of issues. And I guess we can call them hypersensitivity reactors. Because even if they're working with someone like yourself and you're doing natural interventions and they start on a particular protocol, what we usually see is they're okay for a while and then the symptoms start to come back. And it seems that their body will then react to anything that it's getting too often, it sort of recognizes it. It might be forming a complement molecule and also actually sensitive to that histamine release. We do need to know that the histamine release is a body's natural protective mechanism, mm -hmm. but these individuals are overly sensitive to that. And there's actually a genetic basis for this. We can spot certain genes that have something to do with that. There is this thing called DAO, diamine oxidase, which uh, is the body's natural way of reading itself of excess histamine. And some of these people have faulty production of DAO. So this is actually something we can measure uh, or we can look at it in a, a saliva sample to see if they have a genetic predisposition to this. Um, and we, there are DAO supplements for people who have that, right? So what are some that you would suggest? Uh, there's one that I use called Histablock, which can, I mean, you can actually get DAO to help your body break down your excess histamine. But another way of dealing with it, and, you know, as a, as a nutritionist, uh, you're aware of the low histamine diet. And there's some surprises here because, you know, yes. first we mentioned dairy and we mentioned wheat, but there's some su surprisingly wholesome foods that tend to generate a lot of histamine, right? And for people who have high levels of histamine, we tell them to avoid that. And that brings their allergy levels down. So, yeah, cross sensitivities, and it might be different in different people, but they have found a lot of, like you said, sometimes apples and mm -hmm. lettuce. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things that might you might consider a very healthy. Um, now, there's something also berries, called the FODMAP diet. Some, some diet. berries uh, have that too, right? A high uh, histamine it's, potential. It's really aggravating for those individuals. Of course, we know nor more normal food allergies might be milk and eggs and fish and mm -hmm. especially shellfish and nuts. But what you're talking about is things that you wouldn't normally see. It's not a classic and, allergy. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's via a different mechanism. And so do you think this is something that's evolving over time that wasn't present centuries ago and might be due to all the plastics in the environment? Or, or what would you think is causing you know, this? I, I, and I was going to ask you the same question. You know, I, I was, it, it may boil down to the microbiome, you know, that there's uh, a lot of interest now in what's happening in the GI tract. And as you mentioned earlier, you mentioned leaky gut syndrome and the tendency for undigested or unbroken down uh, food particles to literally penetrate the GI wall, get into the bloodstream and present themselves to the immune system. Um, yeah, we, we don't quite know what's going on, but we know that our microbiomes are messed up from antibiotics, from uh, ulcer medications, from glyphosate. I mean, I think that's a big contributor to our current problem of celiac disease. and, and I totally do. I totally do as well. I mean, they even looked in England at the possibility of GMO, genetically modified soy-related allergy problems, which definitely they grew after they uh, started using GMO. This was a study that was done in the UK. Now, they don't have, they don't have GMO wheat, but sometimes they use uh, glyphosate as a desiccating agent. Uh, yeah, what I'm That's saying is, true. yeah, so they, there is GMO soy, but you'd say, well, why would wheat be affected? There's no such thing as GMO wheat yet. It hasn't yet been approved. But they, they actually uh, douse wheat um, during storage, uh, some phase in production, so that it doesn't become, uh, 
infected with uh, microorganisms, you know, like basically so it doesn't rot. Uh, and that means that a lot of the foods that we're eating uh, contribute to our gastrointestinal burden of glyphosate. So, yeah, I mean, look, it, it it's like the old song goes, it's something's happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear, but um, something is uh, tilting our immune systems towards greater uh, allergic susceptibility. There's no question. So among the other uh, herbs that you talk, you talk about um, eye bright. Uh, I haven't used that yeah. one that much. Uh, tell me about eye bright. So eye bright works beautifully to calm nasal congestion and also is used in the eyes. Now it's, it's really interesting. It's not called eye bright for that reason. It's called eye bright because the flower is a daisy like flower in the doctrine mm -hmm. of signatures. It was thought to look like the oh, eye, okay. but it makes a lovely nasal congestion wash. Um, depending on if somebody's going to use something which I have found very helpful, particularly for pollen allergies, which is a neti pot. Mm -hmm where you actually can put eye bright and nettle liquid extract. And again, I use nature's answer alcohol free mm. and really put it as a neti pot. It's a tincture. Wash for those who it's don't a tincture, know. right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, well, but you don't want the alcohol in between it. a tincture and an extract. <laughs> Correct. Formally. It's alcohol free. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah. It says, right. That is a very important point. Do not use alcohol. Cause you don't want to snarf up um, alcohol in your nose. <laughs> right. Or in your eyes. Oh, for sure. Right. You know, if you're going to use it in an eye wash, absolutely. That's why I like Nature's Answer because it's alcohol-free liquid extract. So really totally alcohol-free. And you can feel the difference right away. When people use it even nasally like that, usually a lot of mucus will come out and release and then they feel a great sense of relief but one thing about neti pot there's always a downside to consider if you're already having an infection yeah you don't really you want to it. use a neti yeah, pot like yellowish greenish right. stuff or you have like really terrible sinus pressure you can actually cause that uh, infectious material to go further up your nasal passages uh what about um butter burr i you know butter burr used it for migraines there's a product called pedidolex which is for migraines but it, it also has a reputation for allergies do you do you like it yes it's very good it's excellent and um i've used that with clients also as a um, tea, but also in capsules. And when I'm recommending capsules, I always read the capsules, especially in particular the other ingredients, because I don't like to use a whole lot of additives, like tons and tons of magnesium stearate with 15 pills. Um, so I try to find brands that actually do not add too many additives. And Butterbur, I think, has gotten very good results with many people. But you usually do have to do some of that dietary regulation as well. Mm -hmm. Where you're not eating, you know, junk food for morning, noon, and night. Uh, there has to be some. See, the whole concept of a one pill solution yeah. for everything is what we don't believe in or see that work. So it'd be nice if it did. It'd yeah. be great for us personally, as well as all of medicine, but it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a holistic, integrative approach combining diet, stress reduction, and herbs such as butter burr and nettles, which we've been discussing. Yeah, you know, and this is, I think, one of the, um, uh, the challenges of integrative medicine, such as both of us practice, is that sometimes we'll get questions, and I'm sure you do on your radio program, is people call up and say, well, taking this or that medication, I'm taking Allegra, or I'm taking Claritin. What's a good substitute for that? And so, you know, sometimes I'm loath to say, well, no, take Dehist instead. You know, it, it, it really does take a concerted lifestyle-oriented, diet-oriented approach sometimes to conquer allergies. And it's not just, um, you know, uh, uh, find an ill, use a pill. Right. That's the whole other concept. But when I'm saying these things are studied, for instance, since you brought up Butterbur, yep. there's a specific clinical trial in the Annals of Allergy, Asthma, Immunology. Oh. That's not the New Age Journal. Exactly. Every Every uh, allergist should have read his journals, and it talks about the effect of, bur of butterbur specifically on the histamine and allergen response. 
So they should all be using this because it's proven to work, exhibits antihistamine and anti-leukotriene activity, and has been shown to attenuate the response to adenosine monophosphate challenges in patients with allergic rhinitis and asthma. There's so the science for it, yeah. This, this is what I'm saying, that when someone says, oh, but herbs haven't been studied, that is wrong. Indeed. There's there's so much literature, if you bother to, to look it up, uh, it's just out of laziness that I think uh, some people just read, um, you know, the the pharmacopoeia. Uh, and, I don't know. think they're reading that either. <laughs> I don't yeah. think they're reading much at all. I think it has to do with more of that sales literature. Sales literature and paint-by-numbers medicine, which is more and more... Uh, coming into into practice. Okay, folks, at this point, let's pause and allow one of our sponsors an opportunity to share this vital message with you. This episode of Intelligent Medicine is brought to you by Youthful Energy, providing you with a unique energy support of pure NT Factor. NT Factor is the only nutritional formula clinically proven to reduce fatigue, whatever the cause, age, illness, or just being run down. NT Factor from Nutritional Therapeutics repairs damaged cells and restores healthy bacteria in your digestive tract. Clinical trials have shown NT Factor reduces fatigue by almost half, and it even reverses some symptoms of aging. I've been taking NT Factor for years. With a 45-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. To order, call 800-982-9158, 800-982-9158, or go to ntfactor.com. That's ntfactor.com. Thanks for listening, and thanks for supporting our sponsors. They're what make Intelligent Medicine a continuing free resource to you. And now back to today's guest, Ellen Cammy, the natural nurse. I was also, uh, you know, going to, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, what to do in terms of uh, air purifiers. And, you know, sometimes in allergy season, peak allergy season, it's best to retreat uh, to an inner sanctum. So how do you create an inner sanctum that's, that's free of allergens? And uh, do you have any favored uh, air purification methods? Uh, so there are, some, there are ones, let's say, I, that I even have in my home that really seem to do a nice job. It's hard for me to personally tell because I, thank God, I'm not an allergy sufferer. I don't think I've ever had an, an allergic reaction, especially to pollen. And that's a good thing since I'm an herbalist and I walk in the woods every day. And if I had to retreat to inside, that would make me not happy. You do forest bathing. But I think, forest bathing. Yeah, I do. Before that was a term, <laughs> I sure do. And I take people on herb walks um, all the time right here on Long Island where we go out, we gather wild edible and medicinal plants, and then we have workshops where we actually make them into medicine. Okay. So everybody goes home with their own salve, their own extract and tincture, and also get to communicate with all our beautiful wild plants that we have here on Long Island. So, you know, it'd be great. It, I, I would not be happy, but I do know people who suffer who some of these uh, air purifiers really, really work well. The ones that I use seem to ha be ion generators that tend to grab um, pollutants in the air and like actually make them drop yeah. back. At, yes. Mm -hmm. And those I have found for myself and others to be quite effective and cost effective as well. They tend to uh, last a lot of years. And, you know, they do they do tend to cleanse the air and really make it have a different scent. And some of them release some ozone. And I know some people feel that might be a bad thing. Others feel that that's a good thing. I'm not sure about the science on that. It can that. be a respiratory irritant at high levels. So, you know, we have to be careful about uh, too much of a buildup in a closed, uh, in closed room. Uh, That's what I think is. Yeah, I, I was going to talk, you know, you alluded earlier to uh, the benefits of uh, licorice. Now, licorice is something that uh, supports the adrenals. Is there a dimension of adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout associated with the allergy? And would you be tempted to investigate whether a person has, uh, you know, good adrenal function? Absolutely. And I truly might do that through a very quick test known as kinesiology, mm -hmm. where I would actually touch the adrenal and see if that 
you know, strengthen some or weaken some as, as an initial assessment. And of course, there's much more sophisticating tested that we can go through. But while licorice is definitely an adrenal herb, it also has anti-inflammatory actions. So that's part of that histamine response as well, where the mucous membranes are becoming inflamed. It's interesting to me with licorice being so widely useful because of the fact that it preserves cortisol. Um, which yep. is an adrenal hormone. It's like hamburger involved. helper it's for clear. cortisol, right? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love that. That's a really good one. Yeah, it really helps um, to clear allergies because of that too. Now, of course, there's a, the only thing most conventional physicians know about licorice is never use it because it causes high blood pressure. Yep. And really, there is very few cases of high blood pressure that have ever been caused by licorice. But I'll tell you the story mm -hmm. about how that came to be. There's a kind of candy made out of real licorice, which is like called sen sen. Yeah, it's a little I remember black sen sen. Candy. So it tastes like That's soap. Right. Yeah, I used to like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mostly in Europe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, just like they get addicted to chewing gum, right. they get it addicted to these little licorice candies and they suck them all day long. And that caused an over adrenal response, oh. which caused them to have high blood pressure from the over consumption of like this sort of story. all day long. And that's where the documentation of licorice being worrisome. Now, if somebody really has chronic hypertension, I might choose another herb for them. But it's not like you take licorice root and it's very dangerous uh, in terms of causing high in blood moderate pressure. Amounts. Here, uh, Correct. Uh, speaking of herbs that have been deemed dangerous, uh, one that has really been in the crosshairs and in fact has been virtually banned uh, that I have uh, in the past I found very helpful for allergies was ephedra. Uh, could you give us a little background on ephedra? Uh, I'm not even yeah, sure if it's now, still available. It's kind of like uh, you, illicit you because some people it. abused it. And, you know, the, I think right. there's a, a baseball pitcher who died. He had a cardiac arrhythmia because he was using it to amp himself up with a ephedra. He was taking too much. Um, but I, a, a cup of ephedra tea used to really clear me up when I had allergies. Absolutely. It's probably the most effective anti-allergen. And what happened was what you're talking about there is it started to go into an abuse situation. And the people who were said to die from the ephedra really were using it in combination with a lot of other pharmaceuticals and usually uh, also cocaine. Mm -hmm. So that gave it a very bad name, and it was, in fact, linked to several deaths. And then it was banned for sale by supplements, only um, now it's back on the market mm -hmm. because the ban was challenged in court by yeah. the ephedra manufacturers. And so I still well, would it's, say, it's, you know, it's you a, it's a millennial, it. a millennial old remedy uh, used Correct. in traditional Chinese medicine, probably also in the uh, Indian subcontinent. Uh, so helpful. And I think there are uh, American versions of it, uh, North American versions of it that are used by Native Americans. Uh, very, very helpful. It really dries you up. Right. Right. And so I will still recommend it. And by the way, it's still available in Chinatown. I'll just throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Um so not to be abused, and also when it's used the way you're talking about, Dr. Hoffman, in the traditional remedies, it's usually combined with things that would offset anything mm -hmm. um, that was too much of a stimulant. It does have a stimulant effect. So that it, when used wisely in combination, like in pseudoepinephrine, Epinephrine, yep, they use it in, yep. in a lot of those drugs. It's Sudafed. Mm -hmm. There you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, that's really something that can be still very, very helpful. Maybe a, a somewhat of a contraindication in people who have cardiac arrhythmias or high blood pressure because it is a stimulant. So you have to be a little careful. Correct. Uh, or, this is a very comprehensive rundown of the subject of uh, allergies. Uh, but if you want to learn more, uh, go to uh, Ellen Cammy's website. She's the natural nurse. So naturally enough... It's called The Natural Nurse or naturalnurse.com. That's it, naturalnurse.com. Okay, great. So you've tons of uh, articles, podcasts, uh, you know, plenty of resources there. Uh, you're available for these uh, natural uh, walks. You still doing this amid COVID? Yes, because um, we did it last year with masks and distance. It's outside. It's outside. So I'm sure we'll be able to continue to do that this year as well. 
Good. And uh, also, you do consultations, right? Do you, uh, are they all in person or can you do remote consultations? No, no more in person. No more in person. And um, I do less consultations because what the main thing that I do is in industry, in mm-hmm. industry. Most of the nutraceutical companies, I work with many of them and I do formulation and I do a lot of regulatory. For instance, people who made a little lip gloss out of herbs and think it might be nice to sell it, yep. know before you go. So I do um, sort of regulatory consultations about how to proceed. And I also teach, especially health professionals, how to make your living in natural. I'm really busy with that, how to become a natural nurse or a natural physician and incorporate natural therapeutics into your protocol management. Well, I'm too far gone to take your course. I mean, I've already shot my I think my you are. You, you know, know too so. much already. <laughs> you know too much already. But a lot of people want to do that, and there's a real need. Indeed. All right. All that information is at uh, the natural nurse dot at naturalnurse.com. And was did we touch on all the subjects that you want to speak to regarding allergy? Did we... Is there any ground we need to talk about? Well, I would say I would say for people to know, just in closing, there is help. It, it again starts with diet, um, looking at that, and then using things like an anti-allergy cocktail, so easy to make and inexpensive, incorporating many of these herbs, and then some physical things like, for instance, vacuuming your pillow every night mm-hmm. so that there's less pollen on it. Things yeah. like that can be tremendously helpful. And like you talked about, an air purifier. So there is help. You don't have to stay on, on those medications. Indeed. No need to suffer. Well, thank you very much for a very comprehensive overview of the subject of uh, spring and summer allergies. Uh, you know, you certainly have a wealth of knowledge at your disposal. And um, so uh, that uh, concludes today's Intelligent Medicine podcast with our guest, Ellen Cammy. Thank you, Ellen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It was a true pleasure. It was my pleasure, Ellen. And hope to see you soon as uh, lockdown uh, uh, you know, <laughs> unravels here in the Northeast. God willing. Stay well. I'm Dr. Okay, Ronald Okay, be Hoffman, well. And this is the Intelligent Medicine Podcast. Hi, this is Dr. Ronald Hoffman. As you know, this is a vital time to bolster our immune defenses. I've received countless requests for a specific list of supplements that I recommend to support immune health. That's why I've created the Intelligent Medicine Immune Support Protocol, my supplement recommendations offering the greatest boost for your immune system when it's needed most. Best medicine is preventive medicine. Just go to drhoffmanstore.com for more information. drhoffmanstore.com In addition to the immune support protocol, you'll find easy-to-follow links for our supplement starter kit, heart health protocol, and much more. These protocols are an easy way for you to get the exact combination of targeted supplements you need to help you follow the intelligent medicine lifestyle. The same supplements I take for myself and prescribe for my patients. And for a limited time, you'll get free priority shipping on all of your store orders. For more details, just go to drhoffmanstore.com. That's drhoffmanstore.com.